thing over here, boy. All right, we should we should be going live now. Check right. and see if the links is up. Let me check your channel. Let me stop my camera while I am. All right, refresh that screen. Yeah. Yeah, there we is. Okay. There's All right. Wait, wait till my fuckers get in the room. All right, let me grab something to drink real quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Ain't ready for this, boy. Oh, no, nah, man. Church, y'all niggas gotta check in, man. Hold on, I hope this shit is public, right? Yeah, but, you, but the problem is YouTube is on their bullshit. They're not really publicizing streams like that, so we gotta do a little extra work. YouTube isn't publicizing streams uh, due to the fact that they're short staffed. So uh, let me pull this up. Is it live? Yeah, yeah it's live. There are 10 people. I hope this shit is public, right? Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay. so. You can cut that down in the back. Yeah, I did. Create a post. Join me in Jab Live. Join us live in the church. On Minister Japs page. Yeah, man, we good. All right. Cool. Post that up. Yeah, your uh, your cam ain't on. Okay, I got it. Touch you, oh baby, let me touch you tonight. This is nigga, man. All right, hey, so church check in. You know what I'm saying, uh, man. It's been uh, it's been long overdue. Me and this brother, man, we've been chopping it behind the scenes for a long time. A lot of people don't know we should have been hit the record button on a lot of our conversations, man. <laughs> really, really putting it together the right way. But I got my man Kevin Samuels in the building. You know what I'm saying. Say what's up to the people, bro. What's going on, everybody? Hey, so check it out. Kev been following this shit ever since I was cooking old ladies. I was cooking old ladies. And he hit me up and was like, Jeff, we got to do something about them old bitches. And I was getting flagged left and right. And I was just, I was in the streets. Though, and we couldn't, we couldn't get this shit done. Then I came up with the notion about this 90s shit. And the nigga said, hold up, nigga. Hold up, nigga. I won't end on this shit. You know what I'm saying? So... You know what I'm saying? So I said, man, who better to tell us about the 90s dating scene than a motherfucker who survived it? <laughs> you know survived that bitch, boy. So we got Kevin Samuels up in here. We doing today. Before we go to the movie review, because you know we still got that coming up tonight. But we going to deal with the 90s scene. Where are they now? I want I want, I want, Kev to break everything down from... Uh, the dating, the clothing, the, the uh, how these chicks was acting. I mean, just so many. I got a lot of questions, man. But let's start first with, um, you know, how was the how was the club scene on the nineties on the nineties tip? Because like we pulling up a lot of movies, and I mean, I, I feel like we're getting an accurate depiction of a lot of things. But how was it when you was really on that scene like that, Bruh. <laughs> we were we was out from Wednesday to Saturday. Wednesday night, ladies night. So ladies got in free before he left. Okay. And what, what city was this? Uh Dallas, uh, well, Houston, Dallas, New York City. Okay. Uh so but this is any city. And then then uh and towards the end of the 90s, we got to fuck around with first Friday, which was in fucking sane. Okay. okay. So the club was every every club was happening. Dion had a club called Primetime. Prince had a club called Monopolies. So every city had spots, and it was like the, the draw was to try to get the. I'm, I'm getting feedback. Let me make sure I got all my stuff closed. So the, the draw was to get all the women there, and if you get the women there, the men will come. So ladies got in free before ten, right? Okay. Uh, now the music will be pumping. 
that have the the latest whatever. Uh, and in the '90s, we switched from, you know, it takes two kind of shit to, you know, that's when the down south rap hit and the booty rap. Okay. This shit would go crazy, but then it would also flip, and it would go to the slow songs. So you okay. had a chance to actually get in a woman's ear. So uh, back then too, did you have to dance? Yeah, but you didn't have to. But you didn't have to do that kid and play shit. Okay, okay. okay. See, that's when dances, dancing. See, the game started getting fucked up around about that time, man. Because <laughs> you dance with a woman, man. You come out, you got your fucking Versace shirt on, and you sweating and shit. And yeah. uh, the, the the smooth, the dudes that couldn't get no ass danced. Because <laughs> you could dance your way into some pussy. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I danced my way into a lot of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I bullshit you not, nigga. I was Michael Jackson competition. Anybody who fuck break dancing and shit, dude, you could dance your way into pussy because a woman would sit there and look at how you move your hips and be like that, you can fuck. Okay, okay. You know, we doing the jungle walk and the snake and shit, and you doing all this shit. Bitch be like, oh, yeah. Because I was a skinny dude, man. But you could dance your way into some pussy. But okay. here's the thing. But if you had no game, you could dance to overcome your lack of game, but eventually you still have to say something to a chick. Uh, but by the time you say something to her, she probably want to get with you anyway. Now, so I, I want to I want to stop there. Like on the approach with men on that scene, like from what I'm gathering, because you know when in the '90s I was like in grammar school, mm -hmm. you know, thing, just about to get into high school and shit. By the end of the '90s, so I wasn't out and about clubbing and shit like that, but. As we we going back and we researching, it just seemed like the approach to women was was like experimental. Like niggas was still trying to mm -hmm. figure shit out and get their feet wet. So that's why you got a lot of the dating coaches and shit like that who had the yeah. one liners, the pickup yeah, artists, yeah. and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So kind of explain like how was the approach and all right. you know, the rejection game of the bitches at, at that time? How was that going? So. I'm gonna break it down before I pledge and after I pledge, because I'm a kappa. Okay. So by being a kappa, uh, you you got extra props on the yard. But here's the thing with the '90s: the notion of game. We we were all playing pickup basketball. We had no, there was no uniform game. We couldn't even get uniform music. So hey. we were trying to just make shit up. Let me tell you, here's I went from trying. I, I I'm a I'm a salesperson. I, I sat around and tried to come up with them one-liners and shit. They didn't work for me, man. You know, you know what my game was? Uh, look here, I ain't got no rap, I ain't got no Mac. I'm just trying to get some conversation. I would go up to bitches and just say that because I had no rap and no Mac. All them one-liners and shit didn't work for me. Okay. And, a, and, a, and if a woman smiled, she would be like, okay, that's a more more original and she would give you some time. This is when Alan and Roger Curry, frat brother, came up with, around the late 80s, 90s, he came up with that mode one stuff. Um, and I stumbled on to just being direct because I got tired of just trying to be some sort of rap game dude that I just didn't have because I didn't have shit to back up the game with at that time in the 90s. See, 90s was also a lot about cupcaking too. A lot of dudes would, would sit around and uh, get on that baby face shit. I'll pay your rent, I'll tie your shoes and shit like that. And the funny thing is, Dudes like that could get a lot of attention from bitches, but most of them dudes wasn't fucking like they say they were because chicks that was fucking around with those dudes, they were letting them pay for shit and do that shit, but they, they were really still fucking the dudes that, that that could actually stand up to them. The notion of a lot of this red pill, checking a bitch and all that shit, that, that was, this is, this, that was nowhere existing back then. Back then, you were expected to uh, open the door, be mm -hmm. a gentleman, wine and dine. Keith Washington was, I got the candles and the flowers. Where you think I got this shit from? Man, this ain't but, but the 90s. You coming to my bed, <laughs> nigga, if you came into my, nigga, I had, you called me in the 90s and my entry to, to the fucking uh, answer machine was doom, doom, doom. And I had the echo machine. Hello, hello, hello. You reach Kevin, 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 Kevin. Nigga, we was we were doing anything we could to try to seem smooth. You had that one or two mixtapes. Now I remember in the nineties, I used to get bitches my card in the mall. Like I got, got cards made up in the mall. I think I see it on a movie or something. I did that shit. Now, how accurate do you feel that you know what I'm saying? Like movies like 
Boomerang and shit like when you see like how these women work. You know what I'm saying? Like were they really shitting on brothers once they got their education and you know, the talk shows and things like that, like Bro. were we equipped to deal with that shit in the 90s? No. It, the the shit you see in the nineties, boomerang, yes, dead on. Robin Gibbons, dead on. Uh, I think he did. A, I think he did a strictly business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dead on, man. With that left, right, up, down. When, especially when you had them Ivy League. You know, she went to Northwestern. Yeah. Uh, AKA yeah. With the short crop bob cut. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Cause I they, stay away, stay away from any. Any bitch from the 90s with a shortcut. Boy, Stay away from that shit. They were shitting on brothers because honestly, brothers, you know, I was in corporate America in the 90s. And I'm gonna tell you, man, uh, it was I was a rare breed. I didn't see black men where I was. Black men were in the mail room or on the, or, or in customers. They were on the floor. They weren't upstairs. So I'm upstairs with a bunch of black women trying to smooth with white guys She's trying to compete with me to get the position. So I'm her competition, right? Mm -hmm. So if the company is gonna send two people away to get their MBA and there's 12 of us, somebody's gonna get a $30,000 education and an additional $20,000 a, a year in pay. Back when the minimum wage was three thirty-five an hour, and that's a lot of money. So sisters had a lot of problem dealing with men on an equal footing because they were outpacing us. Brothers was, the brothers who was going to the military and they had a different track. When you graduated at 18, you had three paths. Mm -hmm. Get a job, let me be a broke dude, military or college. Mm -hmm. And college is the path that people wanted to go to. Uh, job was the least valuable. The job, if you got a job, it was assumed you couldn't go to college or the military. Now, but then like they had good jobs back then too, like the factory jobs. That's what I was about to say. Now, when I say job, I mean a job, I don't mean a good GM job. I don't mean them good factory union jobs. They were dying out about that time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and here's the net of it. When you got brothers going to college and you're getting all these feminist ideals and the first time you're away from home and most of us were raised in a, in a, under our mothers. We out here and these women are around all these white women getting all these liberated ideas. Dude, I remember the first relationship panel I sat on in 1989, before Shaharazad Ali came out. Dude, and I, that's the first time I realized we got a major problem because these women were out for blood. And here's the fucked up thing, a lot of the shit they were talking about, they personally never experienced. They're importing shit that their mamas and their aunties is talking about. My mother's generation. I used to hear them boomer women run down men so their daughters who were generation X came along in the 90s with this, I don't need no man shit. So when brothers, brothers were sitting down, they're like, well, you ain't gonna argue with her off the rip because you got no, no data, no statistics, no YouTube. You don't want to be the lone dude out there. So dudes are like, yeah, all right, cool. Uh-huh. Uh, and the few dudes that did uh, stand astray tended to be athletes uh, or dudes that had different sources of money that didn't have to tie to some corporate job. See, a lot of black men were at that time, we were neutered because, you know, you had to play that uh do this strictly business. You had to play that. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I was a threat, man. You know, and it and to the point to where, when a black woman knew that she could get you in a trick bag, she would use it to to get her power up. Now, here's the funny thing. The funny thing is, um, when when brothers finally started realizing that this shit is this this shit is a this shit is a hustle. Very few dudes really wanted to stand up or, or say anything because that just wasn't the market. You took a lot of punishment in the 90s from sisters looking down because they were making more money than black men. They had more position. They had more shit. Uh, and you know how that is when you got a woman that's got more than you. Yeah. I that's mean, they, they, I think that <clears throat> that was the time, that was a period where it really, really empowered black women. And 
with that power, I, I to this day, I don't see them producing anything that actually helped us. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they were all out for self in that period of time. And now, you know, the generations down the line, they want us to pick up the pieces and fix what they fucked up while they were having a good time Boy. during that period. So, like, as, as far as when you was on the scene, was it an influx of single moms? No. Well, <clears throat> so two things. And, and what about college, too? Was it a lot of that? Nah. College? Nah, no, no. Nah, nah. When did, you start, when did you start to see the single mom? Uh, late 90s, like 97 to 2001. We started to see more of them. See, when I came along, it was still taboo. You, Women that had children didn't go to college back then. Okay. You had a baby, you were out of college. If you were Bridget Criswell, you can't go. So women knew that if they wanted to get out, they couldn't have no baby. And they wouldn't, and uh, and they weren't trying to put babies on dudes uh, who are athletes like they are today. Because dudes, because going pro did not secure you. Uh, going pro back then, you weren't a multimillionaire. Back when Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas came out, they was making a million five a year. They weren't no, there were no twenty million dollar contracts. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, a lot of dudes that played ball at OU, which was one of the powerhouses back then, OU, Miami, Notre Dame. Uh, dudes like that would go to the league for a few years and end up selling insurance. So, you know, Darren Woodson ain't rich. I mean, ain't, unless you went and there weren't a lot of broadcast positions for brothers. I mean, all this shit came along in the 2000s. So what helped me out is I ended up fucking around with an older woman. I had me a, a sugar mama. Okay. Uh, and, and she put me up on Mad Game. Uh, had I not run along across her and understood what a, how a woman really should move because she had the paper and the credentials to back it up. She wasn't talking shit. She actually had work to show. So when I'm going to deal with a, a shit-talking 90s chick or deal with a woman who was 10 years older than me who actually had a house at Naples and was here, gave, driving her, jag, her second Jag around, I, I could see the difference. But, the, uh, but again, she was 10 years older than me. I couldn't see, really see being with her, fucking with her, and and uh, marrying her, nothing. But it was good learning experience. Now, like, did you guys foresee that these women from that '90s era was going to eventually turn into like this? These failures, these feminists, these, you know, what I'm saying like, the like, like, because I know like you, you're bump like in age that you're in, you bumping into some of these motherfuckers. Like, damn, we went to school together. Oh, damn, you know what I'm saying? And what are you seeing? Are you seeing these bitches like, um, how can I say, like, doing good for themselves, looking good in shape, shit like that? Ooh. Or have they really fell off and had no real plan from what the fuck was going on in the 90s and just kind of just trying to pick up the pieces? Uh, who, who was drafted before Jordan? Was it Anthony Bowie? You don't give me the line, man. I okay, so, so, no, dude, honestly, it was not foreseeable that they would fail the way they did. <clears throat> See, they, they had, here's why we couldn't foresee it. Black women have always been put ahead of black men as far as the family. If somebody had to go to college, you sent the girl to college because the guy could get that good factory job. And then they would always come back home and try to uh, pool the money with the family. But mm -hmm. this, but my generation was the first generation that, that they turned their back on the family traditions. On they kept all the shit for themselves. And the problem is, um, they kept it all to themselves. And this is when you saw a lot of people getting married around the late around ninety five to ninety six. You <clears> saw <throat> a lot of people getting start getting married or trying to have children around twenty six or twenty seven, twenty six to twenty nine. But the mm -hmm. shit wasn't working because. You got a woman who thinks she's better than you. She's not your equal. So you button heads with this stuff. So this is why you see short-term marriages falling apart. My generation, that's why you find a lot of dudes my age who've been married twice. We still tried to do yeah, it. Yeah, like I was always wondering about that. Like, as far as like the divorce game, it just seemed like the 90s had the, the most vindictive, the, you know what I'm saying? Like that was the height of the, that was the kickoff of the divorce game, the alimony game, the runner man through the uh, the ringer game. Right. Like that's when it was really, really popular. 
my mother generation, I was my, my mother wasn't married to my father, but that generation, they would never, they would not take me into. Uh, I asked my mom, why didn't you take my dad to uh, get child support? She's like, I got too much pride. We did all right. And at the time, I was like, shit, we could have dealt with that extra, you know, I could have used that money. But I didn't understand what she was saying. My mother and her aunts, my mother and her two sisters, who was sat around and said, I feel sorry for y'all with the kind of women, you know, they are not like us. Because when black women at this time realized that there was more power to be had away from black men, they start going in droves. So it's seven, almost 80% of divorces are filed by women, black women. Black men aren't the ones leaving. So that's why you see black men who are Generation X who've been married once, been married twice, some been married three times. It's not the men who are divorcing, it's the women. And here's why they're divorcing. They're always, they were always trying to find the bigger, better deal. Thinking that, well, if I got him over here, well, you know, this dude has an MBA, but it didn't work. So you asked, did you see that they were gonna fail? No, because they weren't leaving their man or their husband and going to get another husband. They, they tied all that stuff up in their job. And here's what happened, Jack. I need people to understand this. Black women always talk about they put in their career. 80% of women do not have careers. They got jobs. You're not an executive. You're not a vice president. You're not a director, or regional manager. You have a, the largest employer as a black woman in the federal government and retail. You're an office manager. You're a supervisor. You got a job, not a career with a path. So they were getting paid a lot of money for jobs and they didn't feel like they needed a man. So this is, so when you don't need us, they, the dating scene started to turn. It started being from you could go ask a woman to dance and she'd be like, cool, to start to turn their nose up at you to where, you know, when I was in college, women didn't dance in, in groups. But 10 years later, they started dancing in groups to crazy ass songs. It, it completely flipped, man. Now, the funny thing is, fast forward to when, when the people start hitting around age 40, you start seeing women but out of shape, overweight, two, well, you know, kids, one to three kids by two dudes, and okay. then they're calling you back up. At, you you go to the, the, the college reunion, and Tisha is 225 pounds and then had a stroke. Now she's trying to see, I always liked you. What? Now you didn't want to fuck with me when you was a size four and your collarbone was showing. <laughs> now you, the collarbone. Yeah, but now you now you now you 225 pounds and you got thick ankles and your fat fingers and your hands and she, yeah, I'm like, no, nah, ain't you? so these <laughs> brother, when we when I turned 40, it was like the world opened. I was like, where are all you bitches? Where were all y'all? What was all this compliance and stuff when when it was time for that? See, I think black women really believed that they would really be all right. They really believed that they were gonna be happy with their Jobs and no men with their, with their nice flat and their Audis and their girl trips, not realizing that that shit was temporary and, and, and fleeting. And in yeah. 2008, when the economic collapse happened and it hit white collar people, and we were losing 700,000 jobs a month, that was them white collar jobs. That's when they got hit. Then you saw this shit go real off. That was my generation uh, that was in, in the bill crunch because you got a lot of these women who were trying to be managers at JC Penney or whatever, and they were getting outsourced. And so now it's like, uh, that's when the gender war kicked into high gear because you got a bunch of 40 year old people unattached. Mm. Now, okay, so when you were dating chicks in the nineties, I know right now dating chicks right now in the 2020 era, fucking is like, it's like getting a napkin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's going to fucking happen. I don't even, it's it's not even anything to discuss. These chicks are aggressive freaks. They are, you know what I'm saying? And they're extremely easy, like a Sunday morning. But it just seemed like the 90s, y'all really had, like again, cause it was a lot of experimental game that y'all had to run. Y'all had to do the flowers, the, the candles, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, you know, y'all had to be on point on every last thing. Like one slip up will set you back three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Sure. What like so? Do you feel that the women of the '90s had a little bit more standard about themselves? Uh, yeah, cause they weren't they they were not fucking 
uh, as much publicly. See, in the 90s, I mean, back in, we were fucking. Mm -hmm. We were fucking back then. Thing is, the women weren't proud to talk about their their sexual history, uh, and they 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 kept an, they kept it at least an illusion of uh, uh, virtue. So yeah, the three date rule. You know, this is when the dating economy was still out there because you didn't have cable TV and on demand stuff. You wanted to see a movie, you had to go to a movie. You had to. We had places to go. The reason this hookup thing has happened is because everything that moved online, well, I don't want to go down that far. So yeah, dating was different. So you could actually go out with a woman, you know, take her out to three nice dinners and, and, and nothing happened. You just out of pocket. And you were expected to just, all right, well, fuck, it didn't work. That was, that was the, and that was the culture for air, for the entire, it wasn't just black people, it was for everybody. To the point to where Dude started, and here's the thing, you weren't really fucked up about it because that's what everybody was doing. Um, yeah, because it seemed like a lot of niggas had to be like Marcus off of Boomerang. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Like even if you had a lot of hoes, all your hoes still wanted to do nice shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you still gotta have two tickets to the show, two yeah. tickets to the concert, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, drive throughs all you had to do all types of shit. You yep. know what I'm mean? saying? Bitches like activities back then. That's you how they get more. Because it wasn't it wasn't so much that you were just fucking with uh fucking with Brenda. Brenda had to be able to go back and tell somebody, yeah, me and Jack went to uh uh Tavern on the Green and caught uh cats. What'd y'all do? Oh, y'all just what y'all do? Y'all y'all just went to eat, yeah. So that's how they kept score. It wasn't with bags and purses. It was with shit. So, and here's the thing. You also had to fuck with the dudes that wanted to do that stuff and had a paper to go there and could actually uh, code switch and go to these other places. See, in the 90s, there's, there wasn't, there was uh, before the Love Jones and the Poetry Slam stuff happening, there weren't a lot of black businesses that were around. So if you wanted to go to a nice place, you had to go to the white side of town. Mm -hmm. So even if you had a, a good money working at uh, a blue collar job, you had a lot of brothers who didn't feel comfortable going over to La Cirque. They're like, I don't want to do that shit. So if the sister wanted to go on there, over there so she could have something to talk with, about to her friends at work and she ain't dealing with you she got to try to find a brother it was it was a lot of pressure on brothers to be fucking superman that's what really like it did like i feel like back then okay so back then y'all had to know what romance was y'all had mm -hmm. to be romantic and shit like that and you know for a fact that doesn't apply right now. you don't even you have to know any of that shit when did you start to notice the shift and when that wasn't going to be a requirement because I know you come from an era where <clears throat> you had to be smooth, you had to know how to talk, had to have a good music playing, low light, shit like that. It had to be romantic. When did you realize that it was like a shocker to bitch? Like we, you know, they, they don't, they're not even requiring this shit no more. Uh, <clears throat> about 2001, 2002. Okay. Uh, so would you say that's a shift from the uh, hmm, from the from the Whitney Houston yeah uh, um, vanities and no nah, no nah, nah, vanities probably like the eighties uh, I'm trying to think of in Vogue's okay let's say the in Vogue's mm -hmm. to the Adina Howard Loop mm -hmm. and the era. Cause this was this is still in the nineties, but you had everybody in Vogue, Cynthia. I used to fuck Cynthia. <laughs> Shout out to Kevin, man. Shout oh, out Cynthia, man. When she came to the yard, motherfuckers was like, "Is that yeah, nigga? That's what's up." But uh, <laughs> here's the thing: back in the day, women would fuck. They wouldn't give a head up. That you was. I told motherfuckers. I told motherfuckers. You weren't getting when no head. Fuck that dick back then. You bet not say shit. And you know she was probably she was probably terrible at it when she did it. I got a reputation around for being uh, uh, knowing how to fuck and keep my mouth closed. 
But I didn't talk. The only people that I talked to was my frat brothers and then a couple of dudes that I was tight with. I didn't say shit. So women knew that I keep my mouth closed. So women talk. So they want to fuck a dude that can handle his business and gonna, ain't going to say shit because they had to keep up appearances. But here's what happened, though. In the late 90s, this is when I told you, and everybody started kind of coupling off, getting married and shit, right? But yeah. then voices and stuff started happening. So you back out there, right? So around 2001 to 2003, when I'm back out out there ripping and running, uh, I wanted into women that are younger than me and they ain't requiring none of this whining and dining in the restaurants. They're just like, oh, let's just go get it in. It, it was a twist because I'm tell you, there were brothers we'd sit around talking about, I was like, you ain't gonna take her out? No, no, man, she just wanna go back. And we're like, this is confusing, dude. They were wanting to get right to it. It was like, yeah, culture. So, so, so we hitting on something. For brothers like you coming from your age, a lot of guys didn't make the adjustment and was over dating these over bitches. Trying to cu- trying to cupcake wine in the dining, trying yeah. to foreplay, nigga. What? No, yeah. you would hear women talking. I would hear women talk about how weak this nigga should. This nigga wanted to kiss and, and foreplay. I'm just trying to fuck. Me see and see like uh, my last straight up relationship, my last straight up girlfriend. She looked like Nicole Murphy. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of her ass. But her generation, man, she was 13 years younger than me. Uh, that was the last serious relationship I had. <clears throat> These women, they want to come right like today. You fucking and uh, by the time you getting out the shower, they gone. Ain't nothing, ain't, they ain't, women ain't trying to leave shit at your house. Dudes ain't trying to leave. Back then they were trying to, they would try to leave shit at your house nest. And that was in the nineties. In the two thousands, that shit starts stopping. Mm. And dudes is like, what's this? Dudes had a hard time catching up to the game women were playing because women had realized they could fuck, talk about it and not be called hoes. Hence the beginning of whole culture. <laughs> Yeah. See, like, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, um, like, like, the, uh, Adina Howard, the Luke era, mm-hmm. uh, Bike Fest, <clears throat> Freak Nick. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of that, a lot of the freaky assholes was, like, the frat, the frats, like, uh, y'all. You know, Freak Nick even changed. Freak Nick, when I was on the yard, <clears throat> it was the Kappa Beach Party. That, women weren't getting naked. That what that shit wasn't happening. That didn't happen to the late, the late mid to late nineties to where what started happening. And you start having uh, the street, the the the, the D boys and the dudes from the hood start coming to the yard to try to holler at the college women, and they started allowing all the parties to be open. So it used to be on the college campus, you had to go to the camp, to the college to to get into the party, and yeah. if not, you had to show a college ID. Kind of like what Facebook was. Facebook was right, was but then he, and it got it got niggerfied when they let when, that, when you start having parties off the yard, uh, then dudes start coming in. The, the quality control dropped, and then more competition came in. It got crazy because like Freak Nick, the shit that was going on with people at Freak Nick, I can almost guarantee you, most of them people were not in college. They just showed up. Mm. You driving when you see them women driving naked in a jeep. You, they weren't going back to uh, <laughs> Fillmore or Howard. Nigga, they, going back to in the Ward. <clears throat> they was going back to Fifth Ward, Acres Homes, and some shit, man. They weren't going back to the yard. Mm-mm. No. Mm. So they was so the nineties. They had a period of time where these women were really, really uppity. You know what I'm saying? Because you still um, went to church. Oh. Nigga, you still went to church because uh, let me explain. When you, I said we partied Wednesday through Saturday, right? You notice I left Sunday out. They was they you had to go to church on Sunday. Your grandma was still alive. You can't be out at the club, kicking and such and so forth, doing all that shit. Cause there's no matter where you at, you got to go back to Westside Baptist. And if somebody, if your grandma hear about that shit. Mm mm. Church was still a thing, and, and men were. Here's the funny thing, and men were still in church at this time too. Men didn't stop. Men didn't start leaving the black church till around the 
early 2000s. See, the early 2000s is when whole culture came in. And when men are not around, women become like Lord of the goddamn flies. They just, they devolve, man. Damn. Now, as far as like the gold digging, when did you start to kind of see like, okay, um, cause I know that that's that wasn't like big in the 80s like that because niggas wasn't- We didn't have gold to dig. Yeah, they didn't really have, yeah, niggas wasn't really getting that paper like that. But that 90s, that's when niggas, when niggas, whether you was at the factory jobs or you know, you, you was a singer or whatever like that. Like- that's when the lion started. Huh? See, what, okay, this is when the lion started. Okay, back hmm. when you, you didn't, in the 90s, you mentioned you had business cards you would hand out. Like I remember, I yeah. remember getting some pussy because I had an email address on my business card. See, a lot of people don't remember. In the late late '90s, the internet people thought it was a fad. But in order to have an email address at that time, you had to work for a company who had internet access. I had an email address on my business card, and a bitch leaned up and said, "Ooh, girl, he got an email address. That was currency." To her, that meant mm. he's working for MCI. A lot of you guys don't know, AT&T's largest competitor used to be MCI. That was known as good goddamn money. A black man working for MCI with a business card with an email address that says major account manager, it might as well say 12-inch gold-plated dick. <laughs> I had a company car, Jap, and then I had an expense account for my car. I had an American Express with Kevin Samuels, MCI, niggas was paying, you paid with that company card and bitch would be like, yeah, he got a company card. That's why when you laugh when you see these dudes dropping these ATM receipts, man, because that was the bait. That's crazy. Niggas was coming, to, I had dudes asking to borrow, uh, you know, borrow your, uh, your work badge uh, so they could buzz into the buildings. Uh, because back in the day, they didn't have your pictures on them. So let me take you to my office. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Walk in there, dude work in the mail room, but he act like he working upstairs. Now, you know the reason why I started this whole series about the 90s shit is, I got tired of old niggas who wasn't smooth like you giving me real good game. They were <laughs> old niggas just telling me, they, this, these old niggas, I tell, we tell a story, my cousin tell a story all the time. These old niggas told me and my cousin, shout out to the Deacon Willie two times, Y'all niggas ain't never had no pussy because you ain't never been burnt. Hit me when the bitch burnt. I was like, what the fuck? These niggas, and then we talk about Connors, like Connors, I ain't no bitch ass nigga. I want some pussy. I don't want no rubber. I want okay. pussy. When did those niggas go from the smooth operator niggas to the thirst bucket niggas in that 90s bracket? When was, when did you start to see the shift and what? What, what was kind of, was it the freak Nick that brought these thirst bucket ass niggas out? Them niggas was the ones that didn't, those dudes are the dudes that that, that never got married. See, a lot of dudes- oh, but got, they got a lot of kids, they- They, I'm they never got married, they got a lot of kids, but they never got married. Okay. So they were still out here fucking. See, it's almost like married, a lot of black men like myself, who whether a military job or college, got married and that, and we were out of the club scene. We were out of the party scene. So you take all them apex predators out, right? You got me and uh, dudes like me. And we ain't in the club Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Then you got these motherfucker dudes that, who couldn't who couldn't get a, a fucking shot at one of these chicks. They become the top of the food chain. So they just running crazy in, with the pussy. And they ain't had it like this before. Cause you look at a lot of these dudes, you like, these old dudes ain't fly. They ain't fly now. So you yeah, know they just they like real, real loud. <laughs> um, they really ob obnoxious, you know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, unruly. They kind of scared of bitches, but they always, you know, they lead with their dick. They always saying outlandish, nasty shit. And they get to talking about the shit that they were doing. And these niggas got a lot of wounds, a lot of kids and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, now I know on the 90s tip, this was when uh, Magic Johnson had to uh, announce about, mm -hmm. uh, about AIDS. How do you feel being actually on the scene? Like, how do you feel about safe sex and how was it promoted? Like, uh, 
was the women like like asking to get raw or was the niggas yes. going raw? No, time? no, 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 no. Oh, no. Out, and, uh, it was it everybody oh, had no. Out. no. In the nineties, man, look here. Uh, you were fucking in the nineties. There was no condoms. First off, you couldn't even buy condoms. They weren't widely available. I remember going to the Eckerd's, which is that, not. That, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, hold on. Yeah, the condoms were not available? They weren't widely available, no. So like when I went to Eckerd, which is now CVS, I'm in my freshman year of college. You, there was no birth control aisle, right? They were still trying to legislate morality this time. You know where the condoms were? Back in the pharmacy. You had to go ask the pharmacist for the condoms. So you I already remember that. I do remember that. So I, you, so they would get on the loudspeaker. We need a we need a uh, price check on condom. Can we need condoms to the so everybody looking at you and and remember you're not supposed to be fucking. You're supposed to be having this. Men aren't out supposed to be doing this stuff because you you yeah. gotta go to your grandma at church, Jap. Jap is he he. I saw Jap at, at CBS and he was getting some condoms. Cora, no. So, but a lot of women were on birth control. They weren't remember the women, these women, these college women were not trying to get a baby because there was no there was no money to be had from these dudes in college. We were all fucking, but the women were on birth control. Now, 10 years after college, when they weren't married, that's when the birth control stopped. Dudes were still fucking like we was fucking from 18 to 23. And now these, these dudes are getting trapped. See. When Magic Johnson hit, it was 91. So I was around, I was around about 24, 25. That's when everybody really started getting tested. And the first time I got tested, all the dead bodies I hit, I was like this. And when it came back clear, that was the time I became a every time, every time. Uh, and more condoms started becoming available. I want you to go look at the porn. Go look at the porn from the 70s on through the 80s. No condom. Then from porn from 1990 to 1995, almost 100% of the porn had condoms on. Because I do remember TLC really, really pushing condoms Mm -hmm. and making condoms fashionable. You know what I'm saying? Like It was like a big, big push. But it just didn't seem like it was resonating because the niggas that I speak to from that era are anti-condom niggas. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I'm, it's, it, you know, it's like we speak in two different languages. Like, like if you watch Backdraft, for instance, mm-hmm. the, the firefighter in Backdraft, he would just run up in the building with, right. a, with, a, uh, with a scarf over his uh, over his mouth and a, and a pickaxe and just go grab people. You know what I'm saying? But like, firefighters now be looking at that shit like, hold on, man. They niggas right. putting on an oxygen mask, all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? We're not walking. Well, back in it, okay. So from so it's just how they was that in when they, when them two different those different eras talk. It's like a foreign language. It's like dog, do you know you can get cancer from walking into that? But I understand and, some dude. Yeah, these dudes came. These okay, my my these guys. My father has 13 children. We come from our mothers didn't put our fathers on child support. Okay. We don't understand what child support is. When we're fucking at the same age they were fucking, the women were on birth control. Uh, the worst thing you could get would be chlamydia. Okay, there was no herpes. Really, wasn't even a big de- a thing. It was it was kind of the thing, but it wasn't a thing. So it was a joke to a lot of dudes. Oh, you got you got you. A, it's called you got you a dose. The thing dudes worried about getting. They worried about. I heard my daddy used to say something about the little red schoolhouse. Yep, they they used to worry about getting crabs more than they worried about getting a fucking uh, a venereal disease. But but see, after ninety five, ninety six, you got a lot of women who have been fucking since the age of fourteen up until about twenty seven. They're not wifed. They're not doing anything. And then we're in the mid nineties. They stop fucking like their mothers start fucking. They start telling dudes, I'll take the condom off. I want you to go raw. I'm allergic to latex because a Ooh. lot of people condoms start coming onto the market. Oh, it's, these things aren't pre-lubricated. I can't use this one. I can't use that one. So dudes are still like, well, all my life women have been on birth control. But see, women start playing a different game in the 90s. They start playing the, 
if I can get this nigga to go raw up in me, I'm not married. I don't have really anybody suiting me. I got baby fever kicks in and then child support kicks in. This was new, Jap. No generation had had this happen. The women, imagine if my- so You said uh, 90s was the child support era. Yeah, because think about it. My father has 13 kids by five different women. He didn't pay child support for any of us. Why do you think dudes had all these women? Women didn't put kids on child support. They just didn't do it. Now, see, what I started using more condoms is because I didn't want to be like my dad. I didn't want to have 13 kids. So when I really got my head about myself, it wasn't that I was uh, under the threat. I just didn't want to be that dude. And I also was in corporate America, unlike a lot of black dudes. So I had some shit to lose. A lot of black men felt like they didn't have shit to lose. They had them good jobs with them good benefits. Dude, when you worked at GM, your out of pocket premium for Cigna premium medical insurance was $5. Prescriptions were free. Uh, brand name prescriptions was $3. I had cancer, right? My mother worked for Firestone, good union job. My chemotherapy treatment was almost $400,000. My family paid $16,000 out of pocket because of that good insurance. So dudes that back that time figured, even if I do have a kid, got what? benefits. But then these jobs start losing. It, it, and here's the funny thing, black women knew that all this stuff was happening, but at this time they became all about self. Men were still in the community. Uh -huh. Black women were really, it became supremely selfish right then. That's when the child support thing started happening, running through dudes through the ringers and dudes just trying to play catch up. I mean, why Hold you on, think- Hold Kev. Hey, I want to talk to the church. We got Kevin Samuels in the building. You know what I'm saying? We talking about that 90s scene, an authentic nigga who's been on the 90s scene, did it, lived it, survived it. We hearing it from the horse's mouth. You niggas better motherfucker come out of pocket. Go to motherfucking uh, uh, Kev's channel, subscribe to his shit, become a Patreon, become a Patreon on my shit because I'm turning up on Patreon now. You know what right. I'm saying? Then you motherfuckers better donate to the goddamn church. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms and stop fucking around. All right, get back to this shit, Kev. So you got dudes like Sean Kemp who was in the league and he was having babies everywhere. And when, when it started getting around, that women were starting to put men on child support. Uh, dudes was around in the mid twenties, early thirties. This is when you see a, uh, dudes fucking multiple women at one time, and they start having a lot of babies. But if you didn't, but if you got caught up back then with one of them women, you were in trouble. But see, when I was around that age, I was dealing with younger women. I weren't dealing with Generation X when I was, I mean, women around my age. So if uh, you weren't going to get caught up with a young woman, it was 10, you're going to get caught up with a woman after 27, before 35. Because that's when you see a lot of sisters back then having babies, because the, that's all they could do. They weren't going to get a husband. It was, it, was a, it was a different deal. Now, how was it, how was the experience Knowing that, you know what I'm saying, like you guys had this uh this stigma on y'all, like this bad reputation, you know, that all black men ain't shit. Mm -hmm. You niggas is gay, you're going to jail, you're broke, all that shit. Like, how was it, you know what I'm saying, especially you being an educated dude, that they saw all you talk white, shit like that. Like mm -hmm. you had the television shows, you know what I'm saying, and they was just tearing black men apart. The fucking uh Ricky Lake, Sally Jesse. Rolanda, Queen Latifah, uh, God damn, did I say Jenny Jones? And on and on and on, yeah. Uh, Oprah, all of these shows was frying niggas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how was the experience, like, actually walking up to a, a black woman at that time? You know what I'm saying? How was the approach? If you approach the black woman by herself, it's one thing. You got, it, was, it was still pretty normal. If you, when you start approaching in groups, that's when the nuclear rejection started. Because they started getting off on the insulting brothers because they, our image was being destroyed. Our image was being destroyed everywhere we turned. So when I would go to work, if oftentimes my non-black coworkers would ask me questions and I felt, and I'm like the, the representative for all black people. I had to represent all black men. 
that's a hell of a burden to carry. And it's like you didn't get any support from black women in the office because if you were being torn down, it, they could shine better. So let's say you walk up to a sister uh, who's, well, I don't know, she's just she just came out of uh, out of the mall. You could still chop it up and talk to her because they were still used to men talking. But when you go to the club, which is where we used to interact with each other, mm -hmm. the music and also the music became more aggressive. See, we went from New Jack Swing and, and you know, Kid and Play, you know, we were happy. Now and we found <laughs> we <go. laughs> So we went from that to, y'all niggas ain't ready though. The music became aggressive and it was bitches ain't shit. But I mean, so the, the tone changed. Ooh. It became pistol grip pump on my left at all time. You know, it became real aggressive. So I remember being down, give me a second. I remember taking that cool, smooth shit. I'm coming, roses are red. I'm stepping down with the bitches throwing the rose petals and shit on the coming to America. And I'm coming down at the, the, the aisle doing the step show and bitches are going crazy. Ooh! And the suspenders and the bow tie and the slacks and doing this cool shit. All that smooth shit in Oklahoma. Move down to Houston. Go down to the Kappa Beach party, and I got a frat brother. This nigga looked like Shabba Ranks. This nigga was through, completely finished, ugly. <laughs> but he had this fly ass convertible red beamer. And this bad yellow bone walked by, and that was my shit. She walked by, and I and I came out with that, you know, matching polo with the matching polo socks, the Kohans and the, the starched uh uh, yeah. uh, the starch shorts and you know that whole fucking obsession cologne or whatever or what was it skate <laughs> and I was like and I came and I came with it and I came with that that baby face game and hey hey yeah I tried to say something corny to her and if this turned around and looked at me nigga like I had shit on me because she was with her friend <laughs> and I was like whoa 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 <laughs> bitch do you and here's, this is before I started using the bitch word I was like. I'm like, bitch, do you know who I am? I'm a fucking Kevin Sam. I am the shit everywhere I go. I am yeah. King Kappa Kevin. Bitch, do you not know who? No, they didn't. I'm in Houston. I don't have that rap down here. Yeah. And, he, and, 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 and 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 Noop turned to me and said, no, nah, no, nah, frat. That shit don't work down here, man. That ain't how you do it. Now, he plays the year after I did. And he's putting me up on it. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I know, man. That ain't how you do it. He's like, let me show you. She walked back by with her girls after they got some chicken or some shit, right? Now remember this motherfucker, I'm smooth and shit with the with the waves, the baby face hair and shit. He slapped this shit old chick on the ass on her chick. Pow! And she walked by. Hey Red, come here. <laughs> you know what she did, Jack? And she and he hit her hard, man, to where her ass rippled. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, and, and she turned around. <laughs> What you want, nigga? I was like, this is back when the brothers used to stop talking and say, hey, brother, hey, brother, what's up? They used to call each other fool. What's up, fool? You now, let me ask, now, let me ask you this. The 90s, was this when cat calling started? Yeah, because before, before that, you actually were expected to go actually interact with a woman in a civil way. Because... Guys from my era, right? We don't cat call. And but I hear women still use that shit as an argument. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that shit came, that's the old thirsty niggas that's yelling at bitches and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I just gave you an example of why it happened. You I approached a woman courteously and she looked and I'm a kappa well known at the Cap Beach party and she looked at me like fuck you nigga but then he slapped on the ass and hey red that's what they used to call it whatever you was wearing hey red red dress red dress red dress pink shoes pink shoes that's what they would do whatever you just pick what a bitch had on <laughs> white skirt white skirt hey white skirt white skirt you ever watch Anthony M Anthony Adams Anthony Ander he's a brother uh, no no he's a brother Spice Adams Spice Adams, he's a brother who used to play football. He's got a YouTube channel. He's always, you love him. He's always doing old school players. Mm -hmm. He's talk about this shit all the time. Hey, Red. Hey, Red. Hey, Red. Mm-hmm. Now, like the era that we in right now, a lot of our women, you know, uh, they, are, they don't really have a plan. 
Mm -mm. Could you say that the women in the 90s actually had like a plan on like marriage or family and shit like that? Oh yeah, nigga. Yeah, you gonna get an interview. You best believe it. Cause especially the women I dealt with. So I was dealing with, you know, college educated, AKAs, Deltas, that kind of shit. You know, mm -hmm. because they're sitting down like uh, on that, uh, my 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 kind of woman I dealt with was if you go back to Soul Food, the Vanessa Williams character, mm -hmm. that was my kind of shit. Oh, she was a bitch. Right, but that's but that's the point. Those are the bitches that you got to have a plan. Okay, okay, Kevin. So what do you want to? <laughs> oh God! And then nigga, no, no, you going to you interview, dude? Okay, well, uh, I I went to Wharton. Uh, <laughs> I graduated this, and I in I have three years. I like to be fast tracked to partner, partner. Bitches who had ovulation schedule. I bullshit you not. I, I'm not joking, dude. I'm oh, not joking. God. This is what because this is when black women were in corporate America and they got they got introduced into how to do business and they did and but instead of going to start our own businesses and working together, their business became black men. But black men in, in large weren't working in corporate America. They were still working like most men did. Mm -hmm. So this was, I mean, dude, you you go back and look at movies in the 90s and you got a ball-breaking 90s woman and a, her underling black man and she's got peppering him with questions because they have to, here's the thing is, they're trying to match up with their, their white counterparts because their white counterparts have husbands and plans and this and that, but both of them are, come from the same college and went to the same places. So you would say like bitches like that, that was like the um the career woman. Was mm -hmm. she like was she boring? Like the was it excitement in the relationship or it was more like an uh it was more like a uh, agreement or um something? She, she was she wasn't as bad as they make her seem. Uh, but she damn sure wasn't here's the thing. She wasn't left, right, up, down, something and so forth. I mean these women these women would fuck. Okay, <laughs> but but there was always something reserved. They always held back. It they was not uncommon. It, they fucking dick like that in the nineties. Well, <laughs> too late nineties. Well, you would also have women that would not want an orgasm because they wouldn't want to lose control. Black women got a lot of black women got swole on that power. That's why you started seeing brothers like myself, start leaving those kind of women. And that's when they say, you're not dealing with us, you start dealing with Keisha from the block. Because Keisha can keep her hair down and be cool. Bitch, you're, you're, you're a bitch. You're a bitch all day. And even fucking you, it's like, it's, it's okay. But it's like, you ain't busting it open, you ain't doing no tricks. I mean, you, it's just, it's like you're not, what the fuck? Now, now, what do you think from that era that caused the, the, the strong black woman movement? Well, I think a couple, I think many things happened. One, when affirmative action really hit and companies realized that black women counted twice. So uh, I went to college in, 80, in fall 87. That was the, that was the, fall 87 was Black Monday when the stock market crashed. So the, cover, the business started changing. Reaganomics was hitting full stride. <clears throat> Jobs was leaving. So brothers, Either you went to the get a job, military, or college. Well, you had to ride that path out. There was none of this flip flopping back and forth. Whatever you did, you did. But a lot of black women went into college. So br women are in college making more money and working in structured environments, and brothers are out here trying to figure it out and make it, right? So you got more black women on uh, in getting into middle management, uh, being seen as black women took were seen as the leader of the black community because they had the power positions. That's where I think a lot of this strong independent stuff, it, you, back then, you weren't strong and independent if you were a baby mama with three kids. Back then, you were a loser. Mm. That shit did not happen until whole culture kicked in. Yeah, that, that was still shame. Those women, you didn't, you weren't rolling up in church with three kids by two different dudes sitting on the first uh, row of church. No, no, you weren't going because they was because you still had baby boomers and silent generation. Si, preachers were still silent generation. Mm -hmm. 
So the church was the last little bit. But like when I would say when my grandparents died, when, when my grandparents died, when, when my generation, generation next grandparents died, that's when it was all bets off because the boomers, the most selfish generation ever became the seniors. And they they did they spent all of the money that all the previous generations had. They was fucking having all these kids, not leaving nothing to the kids. So my generation, we never had a generation X. We were called X because they didn't know what was gonna happen to us. We 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 acquired nothing from the, our our parents because they spent it all. And in black community, when crack happened, even worse, black men, my age now, forty plus. Are, are, are where a lot of guys were in their twenties. So mm. you you but our but our women weren't. So they the average black woman looking at a black man knew probably she, the probability said I'm more educated, got more money, got more shit than you. That was just a probability because brothers, if if you were in if, if you're in the military, you're not in the country, right? So you, you're not on the table. If you're in jail, you're not on a table. So if you're still here, it's more likely that the women had more than you. But 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 black but what happened was black men took that L and got our got, got our ass kicked. But we went and did what black women didn't do. We started working and started getting our stuff together. And now you see b- brothers are, are rising. We we start teaching young guys don't do this shit, man. Don't be going around. Yeah, See, that's, the advice, that's the advice we need to really get our older brothers to start doing, telling young brothers what not to do. They ain't telling them. Jackson just did so on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna speak about that. I was, that was that was like the best. That was some of the best advice I heard from an older brother in a while, and he's been through it. Mm-hmm. Was he in the 90s uh, in the league? Yeah, well, he's late eight. yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing though, you, the my grandfather's generation, they didn't do that. My father's generation was the one out there fucking, and they had no responsibility, so they couldn't speak to what the, what the sins of the the sins of the father visited on a son. Um, and the environment wasn't such that you could say anything. But now the environment is such that guys are telling dudes you don't want to go down this path. That's number one. Number two, uh, dating out. When you talk about interracial dating, it used to be black man, black man, and a white woman. That's what everybody automatically think. But no, now it's be, now it's Latinas, yeah. uh, Hispanic. I mean, Latinas, Asians. Uh, so. Now this is what I did want to ask you. Mm-hmm. The nineties, right? Mm-hmm. This was the Jungle Fever era, right? How was that dealing with, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how was the rage from black women when they seen you entertaining a white woman or just, just seeing you with a white woman or uh, just a white woman being in the presence? First and foremost, we got to salute to Patrick Lamore for the $100 donation. What's going on, Patrick? One of my dogs right there. Oh, man, you bringing over the, you bringing over the, uh, the flock. Okay. Appreciate you, bro, coming over here, man, showing love to the church. But um, how, how, how was that? Like, cause right now, you know, we, we kind of dealing with it a little bit, but they not as hardcore as they was in the 90s. Like you were like as community, you was the worst nigga in the world mm-hmm. if you were fucking with a white woman in the 90s. Well, well, first off, the first time I dated a white woman, I dealt with a white woman, I was confused. Okay. I was confused because uh, I never I had never had a woman be nice to me. I mean, I remember being <laughs> oh, shit, Hold on, bro. Let me tell you, I, I, I was sick, right? I was sick. Sick with a fever in my uh, uh, my condo. Uh, her name was Amy. And her sister's name was Bonnie. And this is back when, and, you know, it was, they lived in Midwest City. They drove up from the city. She came with my favorite pizza. Uh, some groceries, cleaned my house, made me homemade chicken noodle soup, gave me pizza. And this is back in the days where, you know, didn't have cable or whatever. I had a Betamax or a VHS. Put in uh, Aliens, watched, and after she did all that, came and sucked my dick and left, nigga. 
<laughs> Let me explain this again. She drove 30 minutes away. Yeah. Brought groceries. Cleaned my house. Woman clean. I mean, with the gloves and all. Pines all fresh. Mama would have been proud. Made me homemade chicken noodle soup while I'm cleaning the house. Now, I'm laying in bed eating a pizza she brought me and paid for. Watching a movie that she put in and made sure that it stayed up. And after the house is all clean and I'm feeling good for temperature, but my medicine over here and this and that, sucked my dick and left. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I want you to look at my face. I'm sitting here now, look like this. <laughs> I didn't understand what had just happened. You thought, it was a setup. you thought it was a setup. I'm like, first off, you you brought, you paid for something? You brought pizza and food? I'm, I didn't understand. I did not understand. I went back to a frat meeting after I got better. I was like, I got to talk. I'm like, what happened? I was like, they're like, yeah, white women are nice like that. I'm like, what? This is how, because my roommate in college was a white dude. And I've been around white women. I fucked around with white women, but I never really, you know, dated one. And she was not my girlfriend. We were just dating. So, brothers who did crossover had to deal with that cultural experience. It was a shock. There were not as many Hispanics in my part of the country. You're in Chicago, in Oklahoma, there were one in, in the middle in the Midwest, it was very homogeneous. It was white and black. Now let me ask so, you this. With with the um with the ratchetness. And I know you like the we the white bitches out there, you know, they were nice. But when did you kind of start like, okay, we were watching Boomerang. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't like ratchets, you know what I'm saying? Like big like ratchet weave, like purple weave, right? Shit like that. Like these bitches actually was looking good. When did you start to see the bitches? diminish their beauty into like this transsexualized energy that's coming now. Dude, that 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 was that really, man, that's been in the last 15 years, man. That, that it came right after at the beginning when women were finally start became really sexually liberated and talking about sex. Adina Howard, I need a freak in the morning, freak in the evening. Yeah, okay. They really start talking about fucking and sucking and all this other stuff. You had good girls or women who tried to keep their public persona clean this is when the passion parties and all that stuff started where do you think they were learning this shit from they would go learn it from the women who were in the street out there or gay guys so you started having these women who had never been like that all of a sudden why don't you become 40 and become this way yeah I wanted to ask you like okay are you seeing bitches that when you were in the 90s scene, she was classy? Yes. Not that she's 40. Yes. <laughs> she's a ratchet. Like, are you, why are you 45 years old? Fuck motherfucker, nigga, motherfucker, fuck, fuck, nigga, the fuck, 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 suck my dick, nigga. You can eat this pussy. You weren't saying that in 1991. Do you think it's because she looked good in the caliber of men, you know, had to come and finesse her? You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't it, so it wasn't yeah. socially acceptable. First off, she's lost a lot. The women who do this are not married. They're not married. They may have children, but they are not married. Uh, mm. They've lost a lot. They have looked at life at 40 years old with children, and they're looking like their counterparts. You're not. No one expected to get to be 40 or 40 plus single, Jap. That's just not what our world was. We saw people married. We saw neighborhoods, so they're disappointed. They had all these opportunities, all these jobs, all this stuff, and this is what it nets. I got, I got a son that's a fucking soy boy. I got a daughter who's gonna have to deal with these weak boys that we didn't raise. I am overweight. I just got a job. I I passed over all these decent dudes, and this is as good as it's gonna get. They're angry. Black. And then, so what do they have left? They, you're getting this. This all started when that whole waiting to exhale and shit started happening when women started uh, raging out. But then you got to ask the question: Who you mad at? Y'all are filing eighty percent of the divorces. Y'all don't want you fucked your life up, and now you want to be mad at men. So you got to ask yourself: Why you got so many women forty plus that are so foul mouth and so 
so ratchet. And, and, and it's like, that didn't exist. You didn't grow up that way. You were not that way as a young woman. In college, you weren't like that. You couldn't get away with that on college. Well, at that time, you couldn't get away with that on college campus. You couldn't go to class talking like that. Now, we watching uh, Waiting to Exhale, and uh, what is her goddamn name? Uh, the, chick that play, the chick that plays Sunshine and- uh, Little Rashawn. Okay, Little Rashawn. The finest motherfucker, probably. Mm -hmm. She goes out in the history books for beautiful. <clears throat> She was. Now, was. But <laughs> now, um, in the 90s, were the women that looked that good that promiscuous? Uh, and, the, and were they able to hide it well? Promiscuous? They were having, they weren't fucking, they weren't fucking 50 dudes. They were fucking. Two, two three dudes a week. Yeah. That's promiscuous. No, no, they were, you know, now I'll say, yes, I, I didn't deal with ugly women. So I, de I dealt with a lot of beautiful women. And it was a smaller circle, but you kept your mouth closed. But they, they weren't racking up. Um, a lot of these women still wanted to, they didn't, they wanted to have a, a long term relationship. They weren't trying to uh, serially date. It's like Lena Rashawn. Layla Rashawn, and you know, people wanted to be like her, but you gotta, act, but she, I think she has, you know, she have grave disease or something like that. Something she got really big. She got really big, mm. and a lot. Of, here's the problem: a lot of the, the women back then waited too long, stayed in the game too long, overplayed their hand, and life caught up with them. So now, let me tell you something that happens. I know so many women, Jack, who around 25 years old got that kid we talked about earlier, right? They were fucking in college, but never they never had a baby in college. But they got that kid around 27, uh, 25 years old, right? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> then here's something, another phenomenon that started happening. When that kid, and I know the, the name you're going to say, you don't want to say it. When that first kid they had turned 18, all of a sudden, they go out and get pregnant again in their 40s. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they know they they that that one kid was their 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 family. Uh, they had another. Why you got a 40 year old, 40 plus year old woman having another baby and you didn't already done it once? Because they know they're they're not going to get a husband. There's a book called Promises I Can Keep. Why uh, why someone why well, women choose to have children over marriage? See, a woman knows when she has a kid, that's gonna be unconditional love and all this other kind of stuff. With a, with a man, you're gonna have to do something. So when you started seeing women in their late 30s and 40s having kids, uh, and here's another thing that started happening. For the women who didn't have children in that uh, window, they start coming to brothers like myself, asking to make baby packs. What's that? Uh, hey, Kevin. We went to college together. I, I always I thought you were a good dude. You know what? Um, I, I want to have, have a kid. Tell you what, <clears throat> you will do it. Can you donate your sperm? Here's the paperwork. You can sign off on that. You have no legal responsibility at all. I just need a donation. Now we can do it the old fashioned way. We can go to the clinic. I can pay you a baby pack. Go in half on a baby. Legally, they were. Because because the, the chances of having they would rather do it with somebody they knew than just getting some random dick from Rodney in the club and making a baby baby pack. Okay. Mm hmm. Now, the, the the generation that we got now, uh, they they're heavy in the drugs and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you on the '90s scene? What, what was it a big drug scene like that? As far as like abusers? Oh. No. First off, if you remember NWA talked about you don't smoke weed or cess because it's known to give a brother brain damage. Your brain damage on the mic don't manage nothing but making the sucker and you equal don't be another secret. Respect yourself. That's NWA in 86. Mm -hmm. Dre dropped the chronic in 91. But the worst it ever got was a little weed smoking. It didn't really start getting bad till you start getting the mid 
90s when the hot boys came out and they started doing that sipping and 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 that down south poured out screw screw rap man screw Mm-hmm. Screw rap and all that stuff coming along, that syrup shit start coming along, and yeah. then you start having dudes in New Orleans on that heroin and shit, and people start popping pills, and then it started making it into the music because it became part of hip hop culture, and that was a carrier virus to infect the entire culture. But no, man, if you were if you did drugs back then, you were a because remember we were we were just coming out of the crack era, dude. People were hyper vigilant against drugs. You smoke, you do drugs. Um, you couldn't even smoke cigarettes back then. Mm. Now, uh, uh, the tattoo, the tattoos and shit like that. It wasn't a lot of that going on with the women. How do you feel? How do you feel about the women of the nineties? Do you feel that the women of the nineties look better than the women of today? Yeah, they did. And uh, a big part of it was because when we came up, you still had PE, physical education in school. Mm-hmm. Grew up and we had a recess. We played. We 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 missed meals. We didn't have as much food, and then you didn't have as access to all these sodas and shit. So we had a healthier diet. We cooked more. Um, so what, I, what, I, what I'm coming to see is that y'all actually had some women that were worthy of rawing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, in your video in your chat room that one night. I'm like, no, nah, dog. Tisha Campbell. Yes, you. Yes, bro. We you had we had women that you'd be like, all right, if she get pregnant, I'm good with it. She fine as a motherfucker. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like uh, I'm just thinking about like uh, Vanessa Williams. Uh, and the pussy was better. <laughs> I, I, it, it was I, better, man. It was better. It was, was it better because of the hair? It was better because of, here's how I think it was better. The hair. Uh, <laughs> But I think it's also better because of the, of the baby oil and the cocoa butter. They took women took care of themselves back they then. Had collars. I'm looking at the their skin was clear. They drank. Yeah, fucking, you can see the little the, the, the rib cage in the middle of their titties. I mean, you look at a woman's hands back then. It, even if she didn't have her nails done with with French tips or something, her hands were clean. They didn't have. See today. Sisters, they wear all that. If they wear a lot of makeup, if they wear it, and the tattoos, out of shape, colored hair. It's like, you don't even know what you're getting, man. I, when you talked about that woman in uh, I'm Gonna Get You Sucking when she was taking all that shit off. Yeah, yeah, that was a joke, but that's really kind of what you get right now. And, then, and here's the thing. Women were softer back then too, because you'd be fucking a bitch and she's, ooh, oh, and she's all this moaning and shit and eyes rolling back and, uh, and, and instead of looking you and I like, come on, nigga, come on, come on. I mean, like, goddamn. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, these bitches, these bitches will fuck back. I do. <laughs> I mean, and and the thing is, we had women that fuck back then, but even fucking back then, they fuck back and they would they would give you something. They would give you, they would give you that feminine moan. It wasn't that. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, nigga. <laughs> you could be you could be destroying her cervix, and she ain't gonna say shit. She. Because, okay, back in then, there's something else we did. We actually kissed. You fuck a motherfucker and you look at him. It wasn't just doggy style. You looking at a motherfucker and, and women be looking in your eyes and, oh. Yeah, because, like, I mean, y'all was on the dance floor. Y'all actually had slow dancing. Nigga, you would, you could get, you, you could fuck on the dance floor. Now, I told you, dude, you could, you could dance your way into some pussy. I bullshit you not. <laughs> slow dances, nigga, that was, a, that was, that was a that was a skill, cause you could dance with a bitch you normally won't want to give you time of day. But if you got your cologne sitting right, your lineup, and and she at a distance from you, when that bitch get up on you, that air conditioning hit just right, so she got to get a little closer to you, and you'd have been working out, and then the muscles in them shoulders, she just uh uh, and you just you hit grab the small of her back right above her. It's a rap, dude. So did like okay when you was in the uh, club back then, did you really have to like buy bottles, really really like trick on a bitch like, you know what I'm saying like was it well, you had to run it up a big crazy tag and fuck with a bitch? You 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 would buy a drink, you would buy a drink, uh, and you and here's the thing, the the unspoken you rule. Just example of how 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 your approach would have been like you know bitch in the '90s they playing some motherfucking uh some Johnny Gill. Can you feel? The magic give you so you put a bitch to the side, you know what I'm saying? You know, what was the, what was the bitches drinking back then too? 
if that shit was playing, you wouldn't buy a drink. You was on a dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> you the right way. But bitches back then, <laughs> bitches back then were drinking coolers. Bottles okay. of things, they were drinking coolers. They were drinking, they was drinking the hell out of wines, white Zinfandel. Okay. Uh, they was fucking with sex on the beach, fuzzy nipples. They weren't really drinking heavy amaretto sours. Cause see, the bitches now, like these light skinned bitches now, they drinking henny. Yeah, niggas, they going all right, my nigga. Straight up, now tequila shots and shit. Now back yeah. in the so yeah, yeah, my nigga, this is how you would do it. So let's say you 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 spot a woman, you want to you want to holler at. Okay. Uh, you, first off, everybody goes to the bar when the snow song come out. And you peep out what she's drinking before, and you go over to the bartender and you're like, hey, Greg, whatever she's drinking, I'll have a Hennessy up, water back. And then she look at you like, oh, you drinking a man's drink. And then you buy her and whatever she's drinking, let's just say she's one of them sex in this well, sex in the city shit. That's when it's kind of start changing. But let's do that. Uh, back in the Love Jones days, she's drinking the Cosmopolitan. All right, okay. Okay. a cosmopolitan man. This is in the. This is back in '96 to like '99. Uh, That's in that fluted glass. You can't walk around with that motherfucker. You got to stay still. Or a glass of wine. You got to stay still. So the 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 general rule was a drink for seven to ten minutes of conversation. She would talk to you while she's finishing her drink. It wasn't no buy a bitch a drink and she leave. A woman would take your drink, accept your drink, and talk to you. Okay. And then you shoot your shot. Okay. Okay. Now, this was that get your number era. Yes. Um, yeah. I know that the 90s was like a big time for bitches to really turn niggas down. But did you find that they were like, see, like bitches turn niggas down now too. But it just seemed like it's more, it was really hostile then, man. Like, you know, if you, if you, cause niggas, cause like I said, a lot of it was experimental game. Like y'all was trying shit. Well, it was well, violent, he was barking well, in the bitch ear, then he had smooth niggas. It was a lot of things going on. Depends so, on where you were, Jack. If you were in a, it depends on where you were. The, the setting determined the caliber of woman. If you were in a hip hop club, dude, it's the fucking Wild Wild West. You in a, this is back in the days we had jazz. We had smooth jazz clubs. We had jazz clubs. You go into a jazz club, you're going to have a higher, you're going to have more corporate kind of shit, a different caliber, smoothed mm -hmm. out. You go into like R&B, like a mix, 25 and up, different thing. But, oh, if you go to First Friday, First Friday is the shit where, this is when the world became crazy. First Friday was nationwide, the first Friday of every month, they'd have a party in a location. Like in Houston, they would have a party at the Wortham. The Wortham is where they would have the opera. You'd have four to 5,000 people at one party. And they would have different rooms, the, the reggae room, the hip hop room, the jazz room, the the R and the, the, uh, the B soul room, and then the lounge to get to know you. Now imagine you go to a place in Chicago and it's agreed that everybody in your city is gonna drive and go there. Four to 5,000 people, parking lot. And, and after that, you know, there's after parties all over the place. So it was easier to go meet people. So if you want to holler at a woman, she's more likely just to, to ghost you. I got to go to the restroom. She just go to another room. Because it was there was no upside to embarrassing you and something like that. Because the parties were too big. Um, now, if you were at a, at a, at a hip hop club, like at, at, at Club Blue, and everybody coming in there with, you know, Jordans and a fitted and a, and, a, and a jersey smoking black and miles. I'm like, you get turned down and she start talking crazy to you. That's just, that's just kind of the environment. Okay. Uh, now, in the 90s, were there like um, uh, uh, lesbians, but like the the, the cutesy lesbian yeah, women of... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, but oh, they were like on the scene, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause like now we got bise bisexuals. That's what I really mean. Bisexual chicks. Was that shit popping like that in the nineties or is this some new shit? No, it happened then, but see what, how it was back then. I, I said this to my ex-wife. Uh, I said, I believe every woman's had 
at least one one bisexual experience. And she cussed me up one side, down the other. You know, uh, we got into a knockdown, drag out argument. Then after we got married, she confessed that she had had one. Most women have had a bisexual experience. A kiss to woman, especially in college. You see a fine woman in college, an AKA a Delta, with especially a sorority girl, they have eaten some pussy. They have eaten some pussy because women like soft in beauty. So let's say, like, uh, I, uh, I, how many people? I, I, I led a wild life. So <laughs> women I dated used to uh, be bi curious. So oftentimes, let's say, uh, let's say I'm dating Sonia. Sonia will get approached by a woman. Uh, and she's one of the girls, and she just say, "Honey, can can I take her home?" Sure. And we would all get down together. Um, the thing is, if you're dating a really pretty woman, a, 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 let's say she's a Chicago eight and a half or nine, yeah, bro, she's gonna get hollered at by everybody. And beautiful women, and beautiful women just liked women back. They always like women. The thing is, would you be cool with uh, your woman kiss a woman? You would be brought into it though. And then she wouldn't necessarily be doing that shit without you. That's the difference. There was no, uh, there weren't as many, you know, women couple running around. There was some shit they would do, but it was more like a phase. Now, this whole, this whole, what really got fucked up is this whole download shit got overblown. Yeah, they used to, they used to, they used to. Because we were doing it. Shit. Because women were doing it. So, you know, Black women, if, if you point something at them, they're going to always say, well, what about the men? See, they knew they were guilty. So they assume, well, if I'm kissing over here, if I'm a, li- if I'm over, I'm a lipstick lesbian over here, then you got to be fucking your frat brother. No, 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 no. That ain't what the shit we did. And the problem is the dude, that was a big segment, big segmentation. The dudes that were gay, we knew they were gay. We knew they were gay, and we didn't cross those lines. We men have never been accepting of this LGBT shit. Yeah. Uh, even at University of Oklahoma, the starting fullback for the national championship football team was an alpha, big old nigga, gay as hell, <laughs> gay as hell. And how I know he was gay, I verified gay because you walk by his, go by his, drive down the street, he had a big bay window, and he landed up in the bed with his other frat brother. And the thing is, like, all right, man. But but Rodney was, but here's the thing, he was gay, but that motherfucker was like, I don't want to say a masculine gay. He wasn't one of them flaming dudes. Oh. See, back in the days, the dudes that were gay, they would they would talk with a lisp. And, and they would openly signal that they were gay so they would hang with each other. And it wasn't this shit trying to change men and try to, yeah, yeah, that dude may try to say something, but they weren't, there wasn't this campaign to try to fuck you. So this whole gay shit, this whole, this, this whole new shit, man, brothers have never really been down with that shit. And it was not a bunch of black men fucking each other. That's, that, that's the one thing in the nineties that used to piss me the fuck off. Mm-hmm. Cause, Cause as myself, as a brother who's always been tall, thin, attractive, and, and then being in fashion and shit, and, and and my part of corporate America, I got peppered with that shit all the time. Hell, I got peppered with this shit on YouTube. I'm like, are you motherfucking serious? But we got that. See, a brother can't be smooth. And nah, they, they don't they don't understand that shit. You know what I'm saying? Even like I didn't see niggas try to call pimps. Yeah, I'm like, come on, man. Like, knock that shit off, man. But see, but they don't know. They don't know like that type of shit. They just think. You know, it's different types of dudes. You know what I'm saying? You can't be but, smooth and handle your business. See, if you smooth yeah. handling your business, uh, you because that's not the norm for black men. You got to be doing something fucked up. You, something got to be wrong with you. See, every other group of men can be that. The black men, you, you got to be mean, the, word, the word gentleman. If you slow it down a little bit. And listen, it, 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 it sounds different when you slow it down. Just I'm just talking about, I grew up in the I grew up in the seventies. My uncle was a Mac. I learned from pimps. How do you, I got my my from the church and from the pimps and Macs? My uncle was Mac of the Year, nineteen seventy five, for the Trevers Club, nigga. I, yeah, 
But this back in the days when Clyde and Frazier and all these dudes, dudes used to dress back in the 70s. You know, they had that one long fingernail, they carried the bag that had their blade or their pistol in it. <laughs> and, and they little, dude, someone yeah. do shit about my bag. I'm like, go back and look at Don Magic Wand video right here on all the pimps, man, they carry the bag. I'm like, you motherfuckers don't know your, where you come from. Uh, when I called you out on that video with the fur coat, I'm like, yeah. don't you realize some of the best black men that ever did it? This is how they dressed. Three, four weeks ago, Dr. J turned 70. He had his 70th birthday party here in the restaurant I go to at least two, three times a week. I'm in there with Dr. J and his folks. Accidentally, I wasn't invited. And I'm sitting around looking at all these brothers just clean. Those guys would have been called corny or gay or lame or some shit today. See, a lot of brothers, we've, we've allowed, black men have allowed people to take our smooth shit away from us. Mm -hmm. And that's not, it doesn't help us. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't help us. Like, it goes kind of back to taking the 90s tactics, like a nigga like Marcus mm -hmm. coming around these wolves, these untamed animals, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's gonna look like, man, what the fuck is this? What's with this nigga? Is he gay? You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when we, me and my guys, we went down to Atlanta and we was the only niggas with fades. Like this was the 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 uh the, the gold teeth, mm -hmm. uh dreadlocks, big beard, white tee, A-town stomp, little yeah. happy era around that time. We all went down there. And the bitches was looking at us like, is y'all what is y'all gay or something? We like, bitch, what the fuck is you talking about? You know what I'm saying? It happened to me too when I hear that story yeah, about me. Gay, waves, you know what I'm saying? We was clean cut. We looked like an R&B group. We looked like B2K. Well, you know I, told you about, I told you about when I slapped it, when I was trying to do the cupcake shit and my frat brother looked like Shabba Ranks. That's the same shit. It happens in cycles with black men like that. Yeah. And I when mean, they, it doesn't help us you out. Couldn't be, you couldn't be smooth amongst like, and then that's when the women say, I want a rough, I want a rough neck. Got a rough neck, gotta get a rough neck. I want a motherfucking thug. I want a, I want a soldier. See, like, that's the equivalent to, <laughs> that's the, that's this generation's, uh, uh, I need a rough neck song. See, what happened, yeah. see, what happened is my, men and my father's generation, they wouldn't allow that shit. They was the OJs, the Whispers, them niggas was going to croon and they was going to control. Oh, yeah, they were singing them back then. Take a bitch panties off. See, Black men back then determined our style and how we went. A bitch could say she wanted a rough neck back in the day. Nah, nigga, you gonna get processed in the do rag. You gonna get. You gonna fuck with this finger wave. You gonna fuck with this perm. You gonna fuck. That's what you gonna get. And you gonna go make me a sandwich. And you gonna like it. See, and but that was a different generation. They were raised by more masculine, more men. My generation was raised by absentee fathers. So we would more likely take cues from females, the generation, because you were raised with women. So when the women start talking about Mary J. Blige came out doing this shit, dudes are like, well, this must be what the women want. So dudes start trying to be that instead of just being on their cool shit. That's when we kind of lost it. Think about Hammer. Hammer tried to go hardcore and they laughed his ass off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pump the bump. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the 90s was, the 90s, the funny thing about the 90s, man, is it was a good time, but it, it's, it's sad to look back at uh, how the women fell off, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was, I've been telling them, I'm like, dog, see, I was clowning the women like, you know, like, yeah, you know, because like, okay, uh, if you watch, uh, 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 what was the movie? Uh, Jungle Fever, when all the women was getting around and they was yeah. cooking black men. I had used that scene when I first launched the series. And that's kind of like how I started, just always think like all bitches from the 90s, that they are the bitches. Cause I'm, I'm dealing with these old bitches now. And you know what I'm saying? When I started to date older, like I was fucking with a, a 40 something year old bitch. And then, you know, bitches that I've worked with, just being around these old bitches and hearing they, hearing they fucking mouth. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, these bitches come from the 90s. But then I started looking at the, um, the movies like Strictly Business and seeing Holly Berry's and seeing all these fine ass bitches in the night. I'm like, damn. I remember in Jungle they Fever. They had real soft, gentle women. They was fine. In the Jungle Fever, the, the light-skinned chick in there, Lonette, 
Lynette McKee, she was my mother's generation. She's a 70s woman. She, she was old for that time, but the women in, in there were in my generation. But they were still around 23 to 24. They were starting, they were just getting into corporate America and they were looking for black men to be there with them. And we didn't have those jobs, they did. That's when they started downing brothers. So they didn't want to, they didn't want to marry a dude that worked it. Motherfucker, please, you work for UPS because brothers couldn't get those jobs. <laughs> So they were mad at black men because black men could not get where they were. And it's not as though we didn't want it. And if a brother did get there, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you about the player side. If like myself, if you could get there, nigga, the world was your oyster. In the 90s, man, please. It was like shooting fish in a barrel because the the college women wanted you, the middle class women wanted you, the, the women from the hood wanted you. This is when dudes start running. But the problem is those dudes, how you address women, a lot of dudes was lying to bitches. Tell them I'll be, I want you to be my wife. They was doing a lot of damage to women. They weren't just saying, I'm just trying to and kill And that's you. where these bitches are getting that shit from now. That's where it is. So like when I was out, when I was, see, I was, I was a player, but I wasn't a dog. I, w- I would tell a bitch straight up, I'm looking for a good time, not a long time. Now, I'm looking to do this, this. Woo! Because I would get it straight up front. Because I, I ain't trying to lie to you. And I'm not trying to put some baby face in your ear and try to tell you when I'm fucking you, oh, I want you to have my baby. Now, nah, bitch, I don't want you to have my baby. I don't want that. I don't want none, no parts of that. I want to enjoy our time together. I want to, if we go to Ruth Chris, I love beautiful women sitting across from me eating dinner. And I love to know I'm going to tear your ass up when I leave. I, when you with me, you get all the benefits of being in a relationship except the title when I'm in my player phase. And women, it's been my experience. When you tell a woman up front what it is, they're more willing to be down with you. And there's no, I didn't, I've never had tires slash, cars keyed or whatever. Cause I always gave the woman the option. I gave her a choice. Now, so, with the bitches that we got now, I mean, I, I, I'm just gonna go out and say it. I know these bitches don't appreciate shit. Yeah. But back, no. but back then when y'all was doing all the romance and all this shit, was it appreciated? Uh, not to the level that we thought. Not to the level we thought. We we thought it would have been appreciated more, but it was it was damn near expected. They expected it because they most black women felt like they were better than black men anyway. So you, you're really buying her time. That's why they're so self. The average generation X black woman is extremely selfish and jaded. They really believe that if they you spend. You spend 95% of the money, they think if they bought Burger King, they doing something. You ask them what they bring to the table. Well, they keep score. They keep score. They keep score. Like, oh, they keep score. And they really think that just by showing up and giving you some used vagina, that we're equal. Bitch, I had to work to make myself this way. That pussy comes standard. So did they bring anything to the table in the 90s? Uh, debt. Because, they, because all the stuff they had, their jobs, all the yeah. stuff they had, it was an illusion. You know how many women I rolled up on who lived in downtown Dallas, who drove a BMW, who had a nice condo, who were in Gavinci, Donna Karen, all this other kind of stuff. Then you sit around and kick it with them. And I'm just kicking it with you. But if I decide I want to really get serious with you and I pull that credit report, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. How much glue loan debt you got? And you're making $45,000, but your rent is $2,000 a month. I mean, your rent is $59 a month. You got a $600 car note and you're 20, what thousand dollars in debt at 24? Why? I like to shop. Okay. Here's the other side of it. Let's say you wanted to accept all that. Women in my generation could not cook. We were the generation, we will, men in my generation are better cooks than the women. Because our mothers taught us how to cook. They didn't teach their daughters shit. Hey, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, this is the thing. I'm going to put this out there, y'all. Minister Jack can fucking cook. I mean, I could really, really fucking cook. I could cook a, a lot of shit. I could cook good, good food. I would cook the panties off a bitch. Mm-hmm. The only bitches in this era right now that can cook are single mom. And I feel that they had to learn how to cook in necessity. You know what I'm saying? Because of having children. But the bitches that I date that don't have kids can and won't fucking cook. 
Nigga, you ever have a macaroni and cheese soup? <laughs> no. Man. You know how you make macaroni and cheese soup? Oh my God, don't tell me it's the uh, it's the microwave mic uh, macaroni and cheese in the cup and she put too much water in it? No, nigga, she, she, it's that recipe, except it's not microwave, it's in the box. But in the box it says boiled noodles, right? Yeah. And then you take the cheese sauce and milk and whatever, but you make soup if you don't drain the fucking water. Bitch didn't even know to drain the water. You ever have a ham sandwich with mustard on both sides of the goddamn bread to fingerprint you? When I'm sitting in my girl's, when I'm sitting there at my girl's house eating, and she makes me a sandwich, and I bit it in the ooze mustard, my scalp started tingling. Her mother sat there and was like, she went to the bathroom and said, let me take that. She knew this was Cosby people. They, that woman never taught her daughter how to cook a goddamn thing. Women in my women in my generation I couldn't cook. I went to the I went to cooking school for three years, just on just after work. Men in my generation had to learn how to do all this stuff. So here's what we thought: we thought if we were different than our dad, we would get different treatment. We were told men ain't shit. Men are horrible. Black men don't do nothing. Look at all these black men with all these kids. And even if my mother never said anything about my father, he got 13 kids. Uh, we never, I never got his side of the story. So when you go to school, you'd have been the odd dude out. Everybody would have been jealous of Jack. Jack got a mama and a daddy. You got somebody to come on Father's Student Day? They didn't. We would have been jealous of you. We knew there was something wrong. So all the boys tried to learn how to compensate. I'm gonna be better than my dad. I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna take care of my mama. I'm gonna learn how to do this. I'm gonna treat women this way. I'm gonna do, Cause that's what we were told. Now, now the bitches in the nineties, do you feel, <clears throat> cause I know they had a lot of opportunities, but were there a lot of women that were bums and did live with their parents still, or you know what I'm saying? Like, cause there's a lot of bitches right now that's like, I don't want, they kind of bums, they bums. You know what I'm saying? Like they live with their parents still. You know what I'm saying? Like- you know, Our generation got the fuck out. We had to get it. And here's one thing I will say about our generation. There was none of this 24 living in the home with mom. We got, at 18, as a man, you were put, you were being pushed out of the house before graduation, okay? You gotta understand a lot of motherfuckers had checking accounts and shit and they name it eight years old. My credit was fucked by age 13. Nigga, I had light bills and shit. I went to go open a check account and they were like, you had an account since 1976. I'm like, nigga, I'm what? I was born in 69. So we had to get it out the mud. And we wanted to become adults because we wanted to get away from our dysfunctional, even though we loved our family, we wanted to get away from that environment. Okay. We, and there was a lot of lack and a lot of shit like that. We wanted to get out on our own. These folks have been lulled into they ain't miss no meals they've had they, this generation has never had to lose anything so yeah it's more common for folks to sit around and then you got the one two third generation of women of women raising kids and you go out and you see grandma daughter kids i take pictures around atlanta all the time where you see three generations of women and no men women don't live alone that's why they allow their children to live. Because here's the thing, Jap. You say these women are bums today, right? Yeah. I guarantee you, there's no father in that house. If there's a man in that house, you got to go because mama want to get fucked on the coffee table. Mm. Mm. There's no now, man. Now, now, the 90s, were the women, did the women have standards and wanted to be courted? Like, I mean, okay, all women want to be courted. But did you have to do this shit? You know what I'm saying? And did they have real stand? You had to make, you had to make an, uh, I'll put it this way. If you were not, shout out to Alan Roger Curry, if you were not upfront and direct, I didn't know it as Mo One, but if you weren't that way, you had to make a show of doing it. And here's the difference, here's what I mean. I knew that I really didn't have to do that stuff. I could fuck on the first, I could fuck sooner than the average dude. But I know that her image and reputation needed me to appear to be willing to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So she, so if she fucked me on the first night, she had to be able to go back and tell her homegirls, yeah, girl, I gave up the panties. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, but, but he's the kind of man, he, he, I knew he was going to do these things anyway. They had to keep up a facade. Now, it's not required in the hookup culture. Today, you fuck before you date. You, I, I recall, like back just back in the days, man. Like you actually had to meet bitches' parents and shit. Like, oh that. yeah. Did you, did you did you have to do a lot of that? Let going on in the nineties. My ex wife. Well, see, and I had a really strange upbringing. I grew up in the ghetto in the projects of Oklahoma. We had projects. Kanye West uh, family was in those same projects. Shout out to Kanye Carbondale projects. Yeah, Kanye ain't from Chicago. He from Oklahoma City. His people from Oklahoma City. His mama went to Douglas with uh, my aunt. My, yeah, my second aunt. Um, yeah, you had to meet. In my neighborhood, you did. Um, but I grew... Well, let me, let me take this back. Not widespread. I did, but was it widespread? Not as much as it was in the previous generation. But there was an expectation that you had to meet the family, if not the father. There was no driving up to the house, blowing the horn. Even if she was raised by her mother, you still had to go up to the house and knock on the door because there were older people that still lived in the neighborhood. See, I think we underestimate how much when the silent generation died, my grandparents' generation, the last people that watched everything and would watch your house while you gone, hey, champ, uh, while you was gone, I saw somebody over at your house that you would, you know, Miss, Miss, Miss Edna would tell you shit. But when they left, it was the baby boomers, and they they were selfish. They weren't worried about that. They just wanted you to get up out the house so they can have some time to themselves. Mm. That's crazy, man. Man, so I'm really like, it's like I'm. It's the '90s, man. It was a it was a real good era. It had good parts, a lot of bad parts. I think the 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 bulk of the bad parts was like really the women. And the niggas try the the way the way the women abuse their power. And That's then it. I would say that the fact that niggas was the sacrificial lambs to the game that we have right now because they was trying a lot of shit out and they was living it up and getting kind of reckless as far as you know what I'm saying having the unprotected sex and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I would tell you this: what in my opinion, this is my opinion, as a dude that was a player who's lived both sides of. Here's what fucked up the 90s. And I can say this in the church. Black women, you betrayed your men. Mm. You were put over your men because you were a double minority. And instead of doing what other women do and look at your men as a team, you were our competition. This was said last night on the show, uh, night before last on the show I was on. This is what we continue to say. Black women have, ne- have always looked at black men is somebody to compete with. So when brothers finally start realizing that these women aren't on our side, if you give them what they want, they're still gonna leave and divorce you. Do the right thing and you will get fucked over. That's when men started realizing there were no MGTOWs and going your own way and all that shit before. But what happened is men start realizing that there was no making them happy and it was always gonna be your fault. No other group of men had ever been betrayed by their women. And here's the thing. They tried to make it seem like all black men were doing that. 51% of black men don't have children. 100% of the women who had kids were having kids with roughly 10 to 20% of the men. That's why you got Dirty Dick Rodney with five kids and then this dude over here with no kids. So it's not as though brothers did not try. We were there. We, We were there in the 90s wanting to marry. Mm-hmm. Women didn't want to marry. They didn't. Uh, they didn't want to be wives. Okay. So, going back to the title of the show, where are they now? We see you. You know what I'm saying, brother. You, you you survived a lot of wounds of the '90s and shit like that, but you came out on top and you're mm-hmm. successful. Now, your counterparts. You 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 50, 48, 49, 50, 51, 51. Okay. Mm-hmm. The women from the 90s, your exact age right now. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing more brothers like yourself from that era? Or are you seeing more of the Brendas, the, the big booty Brendas, as big as hell, as big as a house now, fucked up? Are, like, who 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 came out on top from that from that era? The men or the women? Uh black men have come out on top, and I'll tell you why. 
the black men who survived have come into their own. I, before this show, I went back and looked at all the women who, I, who were my girlfriends. All of my girlfriends. There were seven of them. Seven. One is married. The other six are single. And they're all attractive, all college educated. Uh, now, of the seven that are married, four uh, of the se- of the of the seven and one is currently married. Five of them have been married, but they got divorced early on and never remarried. See, black men will marry and remarry. And here's the thing: here's why we're winning, Jap. I tell you right now, if I decide I want to get married, I, I could be married in a year. Standing stop right now. I know I can go. My phone has been blowing up. <laughs> and and the thing is. A black man who survived what you survived, who's not bitter about it, who's just willing to speak the truth, you're still out here, you got your money right, you're in decent shape. Uh, we're commodities. And, uh, and, the, and, the, and we're not just commodities for black women. Other non-black women are coming for black men in droves. And sisters be- don't really see this. I say 30% of college educated black men are marrying out. 836,000 more black men are married than black women and there's 2 million more of them. What do non-black women see in black men that black women can't see? Because they don't, brothers aren't having a problem out here finding women, finding finding people to be in a relationship to marry. What you're having a problem with is finding a black woman to stay in a relationship because 8 out of 10 times when a black relationship breaks up, it is the black woman that's leaving. Mm. So, like the women who come from that scene, you're saying they losing, and and how many? How, I mean, is it just because the looks? Uh, are they are the attitude? I mean, because you seem like a very, really happy guy right now. I mean, you you know, attitude, you attitude. Your that shit together, your money right, you're living your life, your, your kids grown, the world is yours. I don't see, I, you know, even when I see the women on YouTube, like to, to would, would, uh, would Deborah Cooper come from your, your era? Like, mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? Like comparing a nigga like you to Deborah Cooper, I couldn't even see you entertaining a Deborah Cooper and because that's- she, there's nothing fly about her. And it's like, you come from that era. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this is the outcome of, of, of this like, what she did with her. Like, coming out of the era. This is what she did with her S. Deborah Cooper Esquire. All her titles and letters, but she's not at these. I don't know her personally. It's the attitude. It's the attitude more than anything else. As a man who's been divorced and used to sit on divorce care seminars, the first thing most black men say is, if I ever do this again, I just want to deal with a woman who's nice. There is no way that 40 plus 50 year old black men should have to skip our women of our generation and go to millennials or late zennials for dating. But we know that the women of our generation, by choice, their attitudes are horrible. Ask the typical Generation X black woman about her problems, she'll tell you, she'll list them out. Ask her the name of her therapist and it'll be quiet. That's her problem. If you got all these goddamn problems and you got an education and you're doing fine and such and so forth, and you've never had counseling on your own part, then I don't take you seriously. I, 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 I used to be cool on a lot of people's panels and shit until I made a comment one day that I choose to date women under 30. That's when all of, I became all of, I became gay. I became all these other things. That's when all the crazy shit start happening. Did you all of a sudden, did you wonder why they came out nowhere? For, for years I'm around YouTube and all of a sudden everybody, he's, it's just cause I didn't insult black women. I just happened to mention I was out with a sister from Africa and we were getting a bunch of dirty looks and that panel just exploded into a bunch of black female hate from women I never said anything negative about. You know I don't be. This is the crazy part about it. After you say that, right? Let them tell it, they don't want you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so hold on, like after you, after, after you, I revealed to you that I'm fucking with this this woman. You say that you don't want no nigga like me. You oh fuck that nigga. He think he all that. He a little bitty nigga. Mm-hmm. They say that shit about me. Your light skin ass. You don't want me. So why are you worried about this shit then? 
You know what I'm saying? But the truth is, they are mad. Like, cause we're not in, like when we look at the swirl movement, yeah. black men are laughing at it. We're la- we're amused by it. We're not pissed because it's not even realistic. You're like the white men that want you are actually stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like they are really fucking crazy. They don't know what they got themselves into. That's why it's fucking hilarious. You got white dudes making videos talking about, please stop coming after me just because you think I'm white. I'm not any better. And the thing is, this whole swelling movement, I said the other day, what do non-black women see in black men that black women don't see? Number one, number two, if y'all, when black women marry out, we don't care. But they care if we marry out. But here's the thing, you don't want the men who are marrying out. You say you don't care about them, but yet you'll tear them down. Here's what they really care about. It's not marrying out, it's, it's when you bring up a white woman. It's, it's white woman. <laughs> That's the program. Is the biggest threat, and the crazy part about it is they want to be her so bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They want her status. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. White woman's status. No, hold on, so- hold on, Jeff. Let me let's let's talk about status. The average black, the average white man in, in America makes fifty thousand dollars a year. That means the average white woman still has to work. The average married white woman still has to work. And he gets femininity, cooperation, and submission. He makes 50 grand. The average black man in the country makes $40,000. Are we honestly saying that black men are $10,000 away from black women treating black men like women treat white men? Come on, don't break it down like that. You know we not. Nigga, nigga, if you made $100,000 a year, you couldn't get cooperation out of a black woman. So they, they, they don't... They don't, they want black men to be perfect, build Wakanda, kill white supremacy, racism, and everything else. And then they will think about cooperating with you. But here's the difference, Jack. In my generation- and women that say that shit, they single mothers. Yes. About raggedy niggas. But here's the thing. In my generation, interracial dating was really taboo. It was, OJ Simpson was, you see what they did to him. He they, was- they, they, probably, they publicly lynched him. Like, but, but millennials, it, 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 it decreased majorly now it's not only acceptable other groups of women are openly coming at for black men shout out to dr tia san johnson i mentioned how he teaches black masculine studies at university of california fresno and he's got women coming to his class on black masculinity to learn how to get along with black men because they like to date them i'm like you got you got non-black women coming to your class to learn how to black coaches so they can be around black men and you can't get a black woman to buy you a cup of coffee. You know what's so crazy? These these black women had to come up with classes and etiquette to teach them how to get a white man. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now that, that that's nuts all in itself, but this is well, what, you know, what I respect about this is what I respect about uh, with black men getting white women as opposed to black women getting white men. When a when a black woman gets a white man, she totally changes. Mm-hmm. Better, she acts. She talks better. She's more ladylike. She 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 everything that she was that pissed you off. She's not with him. Yes. She's going the polar opposite. She's doing everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, she changed her ways. You know what I'm saying? She's not even being. And, and truthfully, she's not being herself. No. You know, she's put. She's doing whatever she has to do to put on this show. Now, the black man, nigga, we don't change for no white woman. Mm-hmm. We the same niggas as we didn't brought the white bitch to the trap. Why we got the white bitch playing spades? Right. Dealing cards. She's she dealing cards. We got the white bitch flying chicken, nigga. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody changing for no white woman. But I have seen the motherfucking black woman change for the white man. I'm talking about completely start talking with the King's English. Man, black man still drinking Henny, still shooting dice, still talking shit with the bros. But you know why that is, Jeff? Because Generation X black women are the apex of black, uh, of, of black women. They had more education, more opportunity. They had more than anybody, any black person in this country. And look, and here's the thing. And what did they do with it? Where are they at? They're not happy. Black men have they they saw what we had to deal with. But you see the average 50 year old black man, and he's happy. The average 50 year old black woman is miserable 
because they know. Niggas your age, I got, I got, a, I got a homie, he about like 65, 70. These niggas be smiling. I mean, I'm seeing. Cause we survived. I didn't even know you had teeth. I didn't even know you could show the back of your teeth. These motherfuckers, these motherfuckers smiling and happy and shit. Hey Jack, what we drinking, baby? What we drinking? No, they happy. They happy. You know because what I'm saying? They, they get them young chicks living. Because they so. Oh, she ain't, she ain't she terrible. Could, and here's the funny thing. Could you imagine what those men could have done if they had been given the opportunity that black women were given? What, look at what they made out of what? They got it out of the mud. They, so, if, and here's the thing. If black men could get be happy, why can't black women? And the, and the ultimate question, and the ultimate answer is, it's gonna always be the black man's fault. It's always our fault. So if it's always our fault, what are you gonna do? You deal with somebody, either you find a, go find a black woman who's not from here, who's not culturally conditioned to blame you. Because here's one thing, my I, I tell, I ask, I have black women ask, why do you talk like this? You're educated. You're this. You're that. You you have you, you don't. Why are you doing it? You don't have to do that. I'm like, uh, you're destroying the image of black men. I'm a black man, and I don't want to see brothers go through this. I don't want to see any more men go through this shit. So I don't have a son, but I can have a legacy. I don't want to see. I was like, y'all know. I was like, I talk like this because y'all don't. I don't hear y'all talking to the younger women saying I fucked up. I should have did something different. You know, so crazy. they double down on the misery. They, they uh, when they when they piss, they still lie to themselves mm-hmm. instead of just being honest. and like, look, ladies, you, you do not want to be like if Deborah Cooper was to be like, look, y'all don't want to be this because mm-hmm. ain't I, 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 regardless of what how much wisdom y'all think I have. Me coming to a bedroom near you is not happening. <laughs> like, brothers is not trying to fuck with me like that. I, I mean, you know, I, the, the whole dusty thing, I, I'd be like, this is amazing. How mm-hmm. much, you know what I'm saying? Like, what man finds this shit attractive? Zaza Ali, see, I don't, this is so crazy, man. Kev, I want my enemies from YouTube. Mm-hmm. To stop looking like Deborah Coopers. Yeah. You know what I'm stop looking like Sasa Ray. Stop looking like I want Zaza Ali's beefing with me. See? You know what I'm saying? And I would tell you, dude, we had that in and to bring it back to the 90s, we had that. Yeah, y'all had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can sit back because I can I'm thinking about relationship seminars, the panels I used to sit on. I'm like, yeah, we can do all this shit, but goddamn you look good. Yeah, I like <laughs> I want Fine bitches cussing me out. Not these, like, y'all make this shit too easy, man. You know what I'm saying? I got these orangutan titty ass. Don't get at me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they making it too easy, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Man, bro, but man, hey, man, Kev, man, it's been, a, it's been a blast, man. I appreciate you bringing your people over here, man. For sure. You know, no. Definitely chopped it up. We got to do it again. Part two. Yeah. Once I start wrapping this up, man, I got more and more movies I gotta go through and shit like that. But I love to have you be a part of this this nineties uh this nineties trip we going down, man. I'm gonna do a whole finale with Freak Nick. I got Chris Law here in he in Atlanta. He gonna tell us about Freak Nick because he was going in there at age thirteen. I know you gonna have some stories and, and whoever else wanna call and talk about this nineties scene and break this shit down. Hopefully we can get some more uh uh Viewpoints, you know what I'm saying, from from all different angles of it, who've been in the '90s and shit like that. Because some of us, you know, kind of feeling offended because I was going in on the '90s, you know what I'm saying. But it was error. It was. I, I I think that y'all had it going on, man, but you didn't play it right, man. Because <laughs> it set it up for me to be dealing with the shit we dealing with now, man. I right. think the, it, the thing is, we we ha- were working with. Every generation deals with the best information they got at their time. Mm-hmm. We, we honestly did not know. Here's the problem. Our fathers, if we had actually been able to talk to our fathers, we would have been more like them. We would have learned. Okay, because I was taught to think my dad got 13 kids. That's, that's a bad man. You don't do all that. But yeah. then as I got older, I'm like, that motherfucker, uh, He's got millions of dollars, and uh, he never sold. He he he's he's the same dude. He's always. I was like, my dad is kind of red pill. I was like, you know what? I've said I would have been a I would have been a more solid dude 
earlier in life if I'd have actually been up under you versus away from you. That's the problem. We were taken away from men. Mm. So yeah, we played it wrong. We were programmed to play it wrong. The fact that we even got this motherfucker back on the track and to be able to kind of hand that motherfucker off to you, no, nah, you ain't gonna get first place in a relay, nigga, but you ain't gonna come up last with Sweden. <laughs> you can still place. So that's why we're Generation X. They didn't know what was gonna happen. Jack, we ain't supposed to be here. Crack was supposed to take us out, and if crack, we we had crack, Reaganomics, and HIV, bro. That's three major plagues that generation. And that's, and that's crazy. And out of all that, the black man is happier. He's looking better. Than, he's looking younger than all of the bitches coming from that. <laughs> like I, 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 I cannot stand these bitches from the night. Man. So, we gonna continue to cook them, man. I ain't care, man. I appreciate you, bro. We gonna talk more later, man. But definitely, man. Thanks for All coming right. to church, bro. Later, church. Peace out. Peace. Man, y'all, that was Kevin Samuels. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, old school game, smooth player, man. These young niggas don't know about smooth players, man. That's Them niggas remind me of my uncle, man. I want to shout out all the people who super chatted. All the people who came over on the strength of Kev, uh, make sure y'all go over there, subscribe to his channel. You know what I'm saying? If you fucking with the church, man. Shout out to everybody who's been donating, man. We definitely appreciate y'all. Um, we gonna get into this waiting to exhale shit. Um, man, oh man, I, I might have to get the energy drink, man. I just, I'm getting a little sleepy, man. But we're going to be back, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Peace.